warmly welcome you back to this, our 306th episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. And we is uh, three of us, and we're broadcasting live from three different locations. The first one is you, DeSoto Brown, Bishop Museum historian, but you're up in your Ossipoff Design Diamond Head home. Hi, DeSoto. Hello, everyone. Me, Martin Despang, back tucked in his bathroom in the Waikiki Grand, not far away from you. And our guest is usually with us as well on the island, but today for good causes, he is out in the cold where we both have been before DeSoto and actually not far away of where you spent some time in your childhood. And that's in Detroit, Michigan. And that's our guest, Martin. Uh, hi, uh, Martin. Hello. It's um, uh, Garcia Rice. Hi, Martin. Hello, hello. Very nice to be here. Thank you for being with us. And uh, what we want to do today is we have a slightly different format that we're going to try out with you. But it's also now um, the eighth or ninth time we're basically staying in what's on all our minds in Hawaii ever since the beginning of August when there was a fire destroying Lahaina. And it happened when I was uh, shortly before coming back and our exotic escapism expert Susanna charged me and us with doing something good about it. And that's now after Yuta Soto had been uh, showing us the history of it at the very beginning. Then we had our uh, exotic tropical Matt Noblet with us from Danish architects back in Boston, which is very close to where you are right now, Martin, uh, flushing out ideas for uh, potential suggestions, how to improve the situation. And then we send you to Soto out there in real to capture the situation. And now it's about time to uh, bring hope. And that's what we brought you in, Martin, because for the only few weeks into the semester, which is a fourth, uh, we should say you actually had this ready already two weeks ago, but then we sent you out there to Soto. So what we will see here uh, is now when we have already the slides basically running uh, through uh, behind us, if we can get that started. So we're going to go through the entire slides that we have a chance to talk about today. So you will see in the background what we will talk about. But while these run through and give you a certain clue already, we want to talk about the general scope of what um, we're doing here. So Martin, uh, please share with us these uh, few weeks into the semester and what was on your mind during that. Yeah, but uh, first of all, um, we, we were talking about uh, um, a housing belonging uh, and uh, 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 Martin asked us to uh, develop a study about a, a, any tropical area. Of course, it was very clear that the uh, right area was to talk uh, here about Lehaina, what, about what happened and, and what's still happening in Maui. Uh, and the first approach was uh, in a very simple way to say, OK, what is happening there, uh, what was happening there before, and uh, what is happening there now. And, and the first thing is that there were many things as we see in this slide, we will talk about it later, is that in Lahaina, there were many things going on uh, before uh, the fires. And uh, these things are mainly related, of course, to the territory, to the, the, to the geography, agriculture, tourism also in Lahaina, but also about uh, people. And uh, we started to, to think uh, uh, and with you, Martin, about what can and uh, could be uh, in a conceptual and as well in a very pragmatic way uh, the future uh, uh, or the, the future development of what will be done uh, in Lahaina. Uh, the idea uh, that uh, uh, we develop is this structure uh, that is touching as less as possible the ground, uh, learning from the Tungquan uh, development. Uh, this is in China, this is uh, vernacular architecture, which is uh, what I think architecture should be. The, the, how architecture should be done in the future, um, on which people live under the ground. So the idea is, is very simple, is to generate a, a, a ground, a new, a second ground floor, no? to think about what is happening in the real ground floor uh, as one level, and then uh, a, second, a, a second ground floor uh, on top of it. 
and we can talk about it a little bit later. Uh, uh, the tree structure uh, have proven, proven a long history in modernism, in vernacular architecture, in nature, uh, to be a very, uh, let's say, intelligent uh, way of developing. And, and, and this proposal is basically to develop trees, not to develop these kind of uh, tree-shaped uh, structures uh, that, that can hold, as we see in this slide uh, on the bottom left, uh, a garden that uh, a container uh, on a, a garden on a con on an artificial container uh, and uh, and uh, a landscape underneath on which and on top that on which we can with this structure uh, uh, live no? live uh, uh, all all around different ways of living different than the postmodern ways of living uh, more vernacular more attached to ground more uh, uh, um, trying to, to, to make this old uh, idea of, uh, let's call it the tribe, the community, the life, which is more organic than the more artificial, uh, almost Christian uh, idea of, of family. Huh? Uh, and uh, and the, pro the proposal is to generate uh, a structure that can be lived uh, organically, that ca can be divided organically uh, uh, from uh, like in plan, so uh, from the top, and in sections, so, so from the side. Uh, the, the, it is very simple, it's, as you see here, is uh, to, to develop this structure and then to generate modules uh, to provide services, to provide security, to provide resiliency, to provide accessibility, uh, and then to leave people uh, inhabited in a, again, in an organic way. No? So we, here we see how this could be done, uh, we could have, uh, units uh, uh, for a small, uh, let's say, uh, family, household, whatever we can, uh, however we can call it, uh, uh, that are composed by one quarter or, or a half of this uh, new tree structure, or it could be uh, as big as three, four, five, uh, and so on, even for uh, other uses different than housing, because we have proven part, part of the success of Lahaina is that there is people living there and uh, actually, not, now that I am in Detroit, far, and we can talk about that later. <laughs> uh, uh, the the proposal is uh, is to develop uh, a, a wooden structure that again have proven uh, to be uh, very very resistant and very uh, resilient. Uh, even if this, is, of course, is something that scares us a, a little bit about what uh, after what happened in Lahaina. Uh, and again, in tropical weathers. As uh, as uh, in tropical uh, any tropical area in in the Pacific and in the world, as in my hometown Colombia, what we need is a shadow. We we need a good shadow. We need ventilation. Uh, these projects that we can also talk about it uh, later that we developed uh, uh, in, in Colombia were different uh, strategies for 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 bringing shadow and leave the pass air, uh, air pass through and just live under that. No, uh, I am here now talking about urbanism. Uh, in the, I was last week in in um, the Orleans. Now I'm, I am in Detroit, learning a lot and, and talking about uh, resiliency, about urbanism. This is probably uh, the main thing. Uh, of course, uh, we are all born vulnerable, as as New Orleans was with uh, with uh, with Katrina, as Lehaina was with the fires, as uh, every single uh, community uh, uh, is being now. No, and I, I think that we what we can create with this problematic of Lahaina is a beautiful example of resiliency. No, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, communities uh, 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 in my home country uh, that are much more vulnerable. That uh, on which an event as the, the Lahaina one or a or a flood could uh, 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 take uh, the life of thousands and thousands of people, uh, and I think we have. Uh, 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 like we have to think differently, no? Because modernistic, postmodernistic ways of living uh, cause so many problems. So again, here we see the the model uh, uh, of of this uh, uh, umbrella structure that uh, again can provide that works as trees and can provide the second floor that provides again shadow, food, uh, protection against any kind of natural disaster, flooding, fire, earthquakes. Um, and so on, and uh, is a structure that provides from this, let's say, top-down uh, on a top-down uh, urbanistic strategy these elements, and then as in the beautiful uh, 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 
I won't call it a house, as in the beautiful uh, duel, duel that we are seeing in this picture. Uh, we should leave people uh, live in, a, in, a, in a, an organic, uh, uh, abstract, vernacular way. That, that's a very good sort of comprising everything that we've been talking about again in a few weeks. So this is uh, kind of always, you know, you throw things out and then people say this is rushed. Um, we think at this point, I want to share that over the weekend, I had been invited by who you know, uh, De Soto Dennis, my German honorary consul. And we were celebrating our reunification anniversary. And uh, we were up in as, you know, uh, kind of pine foresty you can get here, high up in the mountains here to get the setting and then having non-alcoholic um, uh, 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 Oktoberfest beer. Is, is this appropriate to talk about when we talk about the tragedy in Lahaina? It is because I now uh, also have met uh, um, basically people who got impacted. There were two couples, older couples, who have been living in Lahaina since the 70s. They were still there, so they were saved, but they also lost everything. And so I should say to you guys, especially to you, Martin, they look very much forward to the show because what they want is hope. But they don't, they do not, what they don't want is, I asked them about, you know, the response that you, DeSoto, got. You had a lot of, rightly so, uh, you know, viewers and, and clicks, 2000 or something like that. But you also got a lot of comments that were, as these people, I asked them, they were not helpful. They said conspiracy theories are not what we want. It's not what we need, because what we need is to move on. And uh, there are people whose job it is to find justice, and they need to find out who was all involved and who is certainly also to be in some way taught uh, 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 how to do better next time. But they said for them, uh, you got to give us hope uh, in terms of uh, providing us with uh, suggestions of how to get back to life in the best possible way. So that's basically what we want to do here. Uh, in this show. And I, from my side, I want to uh, go back to the slide uh, too uh, quick, because the best I can provide to this regards is the, when I was asked by my hometown, when we were asked by my hometown to make the first decarbonized, as we like to call it in these days, we always change term terminology. First it was green, and then it was sustainable. Now it's decarbonized. It all wants to, you know, uh, you know mean the same thing to design the first off fossil fuel free school. There was a pre-existing building that we see at the two, at the bottom pictures there. And uh, this building was so run down that kids got sick and they got mold. No one died, so don't get wrong. Any kind of comparison can always only be wrong because it's not the same case. So you have to differentiate and abstract that. But what I try to say is that finding out who was responsible for the kids to get sick might it have been deferred maintenance? Might it have been the owner? Might it have been some roof contractor? Might it have been whatever, right? Uh, we could not wait for that to be found out uh, to rebuild the building, to build a new building, to then heal the kids. And uh, that's, we see on the, on the slide three, we see that was the, that was the attempt to do. So this is a, this is a building now uh, we should also not forget to say we have uh, the war against Israel in big times on top of everything else that we already have, the war in the Ukraine, the war in so many parts of the world. We got the war uh, uh, on climate. We got all of that, and we, and we get more, and it, it's not stopping. This project here can give hope as well because uh, this is saving the world as far as climate to be off the grid. And next slide, probably equally important, if not more important than these days, it's also trying to save the world as far as um, uh, securing peace. Because the director of the school, who you saw on the previous slide, sitting there on the, on the floor, is having, in, in 15, she got a lot of immigrants uh, from, from Syria at that point. In the last year, when I revisit, I always go back every year, she had lots of them from the Ukraine. And she has, as you see in the picture, uh, you know, you see a Borka there, that's a teacher. So you got the United Nations there 
uh, living that whenever there is an argument about, oh, I'm better than you, she says, no, let's sit down and discuss this. And they come out with a compromise. So they, for me, Ms. Savitsa is the, is the director's name. She's my hero because she is practicing climate peace and people's peace right there in this smallest unit. So yes, architecture can have the power, although it might be small, and, and your project, um, I, I believe, and that's why we're here to discuss that, can have the same uh, powerful impact on, um, again, having the other experts parallel to us figuring out, you know, what we can learn from it, uh, from a jurisdictional point, from an organizational, from an energy point of view. You know, and us Europeans, of course, it's easy for us. We have been, I guess, getting too arrogant over the times and saying, oh, why don't you put utility under the ground? That's how we've been doing it, you know, forever. Versus Americans still seem to be on the wagon train thing and, you know, putting the wooden poles up there and then forget about it, right? But uh, so let let everyone in their capacities and in their areas basically trying to do the best. And so um, that's what we're doing here. And you can see the Soto in many of the show codes, Martin was uh, building his, uh, his hypothesis upon many of your examinations. And the slide eight, maybe we go back to, because you just made us throw this in last night. So let's go there and have you explain why the Soto. Well, there are several reasons. Obviously, being the historian, I always am looking back to the past to see what worked, what didn't, what do we want to repeat, what do we want to restore, and things like that. And, <coughs> excuse me. And I think that this is the perfect opportunity to bring up, and I know Martin already in some of the slides that I've seen has addressed this, but the natural environment where Lahaina is located has been altered a great deal by people over time, over centuries, because the Hawaiians started to do it before the Westerners came here and outside people began to change things as well. And one of the things that uh, when Polynesians came to the Hawaiian Islands, they brought particular plants with them to help them survive. And one of the plants that they brought was this. This is ulu. This is the breadfruit, which is grown throughout the tropical areas of the entire world. And not only is this an important source of food, but it also is a beautiful plant, a beautiful tree of itself, uh, aesthetically beautiful, and it also provides food. Lahaina in the 19th century was known for its extensive groves of ulu trees. So Hawaiians had already grown, were already altering the environment to not only survive there, but also to cut the effects of the sun. Lahaina, the name Lahaina means the cruel sun, meaning that Hawaiians always acknowledged that this was a very sunny, very hot and dry area. The more trees you have, the more you are reducing temperatures. And Martine already mentioned that shade is very important as part of the things that you want to create there. But I also want to say, and this is something I've said in the previous uh, shows that I've done, and, and this talks to something that you just said, Martin, the regrowth of plants, the regrowth of trees, the regrowth of greenery. And let's go to the next slide, because this really illustrates what, what we're talking about here. That regrowth of greenery is also something that's very important for hope for people. And one of the things that's been brought up a lot has been the regrowth of the, the large banyan tree in the center of Lahaina. And that's what that small picture is at the top. That banyan tree was badly damaged by the fire, but it did in fact survive and it has in fact regrown. Well, in the three photographs at the bottom of this slide, we see Lahaina before the fire, we see Lahaina after the fire, and we see Lahaina as its potential future self, meaning that with the, the situation or with the, 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 uh, what Martin has just proposed in terms of its redevelopment, you turn Lahaina into a solid canopy of green through what he's proposing. And again, not only is this more pleasant for people to live in, not only does it provide shade and comfort, coolness, uh, increased, uh, increased um, humidity from the tree giving off, the tree's giving off 
um, water, all that makes life more appealing and more pleasant for people, but it's also a source of food, as was said, if we are growing fruit trees. But again, the mental benefits of being around greenery, the mental benefits of being around plants are also part of it. And the regrowth through the replanting of trees, again, it's very important for people to have hope because the simple sight of new greenery growing is something which is uplifting in this, in what is now a barren, burned out environment of ash that's that's gray and black and brown to reassert greenery to to restore growth is something which is going to be mentally very healing for people. So. I think there are emotional and mental benefits as well as physical benefits to what's being proposed. Yeah. Can we go back to the previous slide one more time? Because I want to throw in one thing that I thought I cannot hide because it just popped up on my phone looking uh, at Hawaii News Now, news on my phone, because there's, there's ethics, right? I mean, there's aesthetics. Mostly people think we're all about aesthetics, right? But Massimiliano Fuchsas in around the turn of the millennium um, was uh, at the VNL. And I know, Martin, you're also interested and affiliated with in various ways, uh, was talking about aesthetics and ethics and ethics and aesthetics. So right now, while the audience might say, well, you are sitting comfortably in your, in your spaces and places, and we are out there uh, and are you know, vulnerable to be evicted, being kicked out of the hotels that you said to so the rightly so, are, we're good to have, but now they're kicked out, which is not good to have. Or now the dark side of capitalism kicks in, as we see here, as people take advantage of people's pain and tragedy and rip them off with $3,000 for a studio, right? So that's, that is highly unethical. That needs to stop. And I think we should talk about, you know, your proposal and Martine and want to pick your brain on that one. Also, we said we always get, you know, Stanley Chang's newsletter just before the show. So I really don't. I send it to you, but I did not give you. He does not give us time to. Maybe I should ask him to send it an hour earlier or a day earlier so we can really take it in you know but he was sharing a project that afforded to you i said well meant but wrongly done which is which is again and i think you 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 point on without shame martin called it the christian way this this mm -hmm. kind of hermeticizing way and and taking advantage for your your own benefit for your own profit so let's talk talk a little bit more maybe along the slide of maybe 17 we bring in uh, we bring back about that sort of socially ethical aspect of it, Martin. Can we pick your brain a little bit more on that one? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have the the we have here a, a, again an amazing opportunity, no? And the 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 diagram is very simple, no? The diagram is a a just a structure and a, a service unit. So it is almost, uh, I have in, in other moments developed projects uh, with this idea, it's just providing the only basic needs that architecture can provide, you know, which is uh, a, a roof, so again, a shadow, and services. This is almost a, a camp. You know? uh, uh, so we can do it uh, in a more permanent, permanent way, and I mean, think about it in a, for being permanent, which I think it should be. Uh, or we can also be, do it very fast. This could be built in three days. No? It is a prefab uh, structure that could be built and, and could cost people uh, very, very rapidly. No? And then the, the hammock is, is the simple uh, 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 symbol of how uh, uh, of this of this Let's call it provisional ready-made shelter. No? Uh, as it happens, one of the th things I arrived very recently to Hawaii, flying from, from Colombia, that have a lot of similarities, and probably uh, this is my research about, but this is another uh, discussion, uh, is how people pop up 
huge, super complex structures on the beach every 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 day, every weekend. Uh, so tents, barbecues, uh, uh, generators, uh, chairs, hammocks, and the, and they build a habitat, and then they dismantle it. You know? And this is beautiful because uh, we can start living like that. Uh, we can uh, find new ways. I mean, we talk now about digital nomads. Tourism is that. No, tourism is just to arrive to uh, get uh, a, a provisional belonging to a place, and then you leave, and someone else is, uh, builds a belonging on this on this place. But why? Yeah. Why are you thinking about an architecture that can be adapted to that? Absolutely. And then there are only two minutes left, and we're going to continue uh, next week because this is too exciting. But I think we want to make clear again to all the suspicious conspiracy people out there that might we might still have. Um, we are not smart city uh, supporters, although we, we think, you know, uh, Lahaina was actually in many ways already pretty smart. It was a smart city. You just should have been taking the cars out. And so, um, you know, there there is nothing to actually make smarter because it was inherently already smart. And maybe, yes, in the tectonics, as you DeSoto pointed out last time, you said, you know, wood as stick frame construction was okay back then because we had the cash crop side effect of plantations that kept everything relatively moist and wet. So it was okay for that. But once I was the witness with one of your colleagues, Martin, who uh, on the side was doing charter helicopter uh, flight for tourists and had a German one, and he got me in as a translator. And I saw the last uh, uh, chimney smoking of um, basically the sugarcane a cash crop. And, and that was it. And after that, things dried up. So we have to rethink. So from... Next week, we're going to explain again, why in the world are we proposing here wood again, which one might say, based on your observation, DeSoto, that might have been a no-go, and we move on to other things. But uh, as you perfectly said, uh, Martin, things are not, and they shouldn't be uh, overly simplified. They are very complex, and but, you know, we, we can... We can we can achieve uh, basically a, a very satisfying solution um, within out, out of a very complex uh, kind of an, um, an, an, an addressing. So with that, we're done for today and we look forward to much more because there's so much exciting stuff here to talk about. So thank you again for having been with us. Thank you, Martin. Thank you to Soto. Uh, see you guys all back next week. And until then, I guess, as we just contemplated about, stay aesthetically ethical, ethically aesthetical. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.